Welcome to China Daily Speak Talk. Today we are very honored to have Dr. Robert Kuhn to join us. Uh, it's a very uh, interesting moment in China now with the National People's Congress and the, the uh, CPPCC going on. Uh, it's the first time that the uh, Chinese new leadership to deliver their uh, annual report to its people and to the world, uh, some kind. So it's very uh, interesting for us to have Dr. Kuhn to uh, give us some insights about what's going on in China and how it affects the world. Uh, so Dr. Kuhn, it's uh, really very honored to have you here. Uh, last year, about this moment, you were also in Beijing, I guess, uh, to witness uh, you know, the, the new leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, so after the one year of the Xi Jinping and the Li Keqiang administration, so what has the biggest impression for you of the, about the new administration? Certainly the last year has been quite dramatic in the new leadership's uh, vision for China. Uh, we can discuss it on a number of, uh, of uh, sectors. Um, certainly the uh, economy is always number one in terms of interest because that drives everything else. And the commitment to reform, uh, very broadly speaking, uh, has been quite dramatic. Um, at the third plenum of the party in November, which of course sets the policy for the country, uh, the market was uh, given a decisive role in uh, China's economy. And if you trace the economic history of China uh, since uh, Deng Xiaoping opened reform uh, in 1978, you can see a progressive increase in the uh, importance of the economy. Um, uh, as uh, China's uh, reform has uh, continued to deepen. Uh, and this is the first time the, the word decisive was used, and that's very mm -hmm. significant. Uh, there are some uh, complexities, of course. Um, some would say contradictions as the process develops. Uh, um, as state-owned enterprises were still called a, a dominant part of society um, in, 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 economic, in the economic sector. Um, and so that's somewhat um, uh, contradictory, but um, still you see a very distinct progress. And you can't expect reform to happen all at once. There has to be mm -hmm. a progressive uh, approach. So uh, the market uh, and the deepening of reform is clearly one of the first uh, um, things of importance. Uh, um, next, you have to look at uh, the uh, whole approach to, uh, uh, to government, uh, very broadly speaking. So uh, there has been a progressive um, uh, d diminishment of the administrative power of the government from simply um, administrative rules that, that, that companies have to follow or have been downgraded. So less and less rules are, been, uh, are, are being uh, um, uh, uh, forced on the, on the economic sector, and some rules are being pushed down to local levels. And people don't focus on this, but this is really important, in other words, for, for the economy to be, to be very vibrant. And so there are many areas that that's, that's occurring. Uh, reform of state-owned enterprises, which everybody feels is a necessary step, has been a little slower. Uh, but in the process, you, you know, it would probably be a mistake to do everything all at once. So there is this process economically. Uh, certainly in the last year, there's been an emphasis on uh, uh, a diminishment of uh, uh, go uh, governmental and official um, uh, banquets and trips and uh, uh, some of the uh, lavish uh, spending that we know of mm -hmm. in the past. In fact, in the work report that uh, uh, Premier Li Kachan gave, I think he reported that uh, the reduction in central government uh, expenditures on cars and trips and uh, what's called hospitality, which is, you know, banquets and things, uh, was down 35 percent, which is a huge uh, mm -hmm. decrease. And at the provincial level, uh, I think 26 percent down. So that's a dramatic um, difference. It's, it's uh, the, the saving of money is important, but, but frankly more important is the attitude that that creates in officials, that the, the officials are uh, more to serve the people than to serve themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that message has come down from uh, President Xi and has had a, a you know, very significant impact. Uh, people appreciate it. Um, 
I'm not sure all the officials appreciate it, <laughs> but I think when they think soberly about uh, about this policy, they'll real everybody will realize this is really good for China, um, especially in the political system as it exists. It's very important to uh, uh, to uh, make the uh, go governmental officials and party officials uh, uh, really recognize that they're serving the people, mm -hmm. not the people are serving them. So this is a very significant change uh, in China. We've also seen uh, internationally uh, China beginning to uh, assert itself more, uh, befitting its uh, economic uh, position, second largest economy of the world, uh, projected to be the largest economy mm -hmm. in, in a number of years uh, in, in terms of uh, international involvement. So you, you can't find any international topic no matter where it is in the world, in which China is not involved. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I think this is, this is very good for the world, and I think it's very good for China, because the more China has to take responsibility for uh, what's happening in the world, not just worry about itself, the better it is for China. Uh, so China is going through um, a, a maturation process, maybe faster than some of the leaders would, would prefer, because mm -hmm. uh, Many leaders have told me that uh, you know China has so many problems. Mm -hmm. we, we 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 just want to focus on our own problems. We don't want to mm -hmm. get involved in other people's problems. Mm -hmm. We have enough of our own, but the world is so interconnected that's impossible anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chinese leadership is uh, is taking that responsibility very seriously all over the world. And I think that's a a very good um, uh, sign for the world. And and it, it it has benefits for China too because if you have to be involved in the problems all over the world you can, you will be, see issues uh, with, with more uh, granularity and more s specificity, and that will help China itself deal with its own mm -hmm. problems. So it's, it's been a very exciting year. Uh, I've done a lot of media in the West, uh, mm -hmm. all, you know, all the major news um, networks and uh, business networks uh, following the progress of this year. And, and uh, uh, I, I would say that uh, the, the vast majority of the, of the uh, news uh, um, uh, experts who follow China have been surprised at the uh, strength, uh, the confidence, and the, uh, the real changes that uh, have occurred under, under President uh, Xi uh, in the last year. Uh, the, uh, the problem with that is it creates higher expectations. Mm -hmm. So the expectations of the Chinese people <coughs> are now even higher, uh, but that's good. And so uh, in today's world, uh, leadership has to be responsive to the people. So uh, it's great to, great to be here, great to see uh, the, um, uh, the um, two political uh, mm -hmm. uh, sessions going on, and uh, we uh, look forward to even more exciting times ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you actually touched on <laughs> many <laughs> issues that we are trying to cover in the following question. But uh, uh, so about the uh, Premier Li's uh, uh, work report, mm -hmm. you actually mentioned about that. So what's the most uh, impressive uh, message for you? And uh, what's the most uh, relevant message to the international community from that report? Well, certainly the international community is uh, looking at the report very carefully. Uh, everybody looks at the uh, gross number that is set mm -hmm. for um, the GDP growth and inflation. So mm -hmm. GDP is set at 7.5 percent, inflation no higher than 3.5. That's in line with expectation. But I always point out in my analyses that um, if you just say that number, you really don't understand anything about what, what uh, the economy is. Uh, because first of all, uh, people are unhappy the number is 7, 7.5%, seven it used to be 10% or 11 And I always point out that when, when was it 10 or 11%? Well, maybe um, uh, 10 years ago, to 11, mm -hmm. 12 years ago, uh, what was China's economy there? It was a rough numbers. It was about mm -hmm. uh, uh, $2 trillion when mm -hmm. President Hu Jintao took office. It may yeah. have been a little less. 10% mm -hmm. on $2 trillion of an increase is $200 billion a year of gross mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's just use simple numbers. Round it down to 7%. It's, an, it's more than $9 trillion. Yeah. It's getting close to $10 trillion. Yes, yeah. so, we're getting, so the incremental I increase at a, at a lower growth rate on a higher base could be as much as $700 billion. Mm -hmm. So people are upset at a 7 or 7.5% 7 growth rate compared to 10 when the absolute amount is three and a half times what it was in mm -hmm. terms of gross amount, absolute amount per year. 
and the population is not that slightly larger, but not that much larger. Mm -hmm. So the incremental amount on a per capita basis is very high. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is a very, very strong achievement to be able to go at that level. So that's the good side. Mm -hmm. Now there's the bad side, mm -hmm. which uh, says, uh, what are the components of the GDP? Because you have to look at components of it. And there are only three components, uh, essentially, of, of, of the GDP, um, investment, exports, and consumption. And there's a problem with each of these, if we really start to think about it. On the investment side, if you build, uh, um, if the city has no airport and you build an airport, that's enormously productive. But if it has one airport and you build two airports, uh, it's much less productive. And if mm -hmm. it has two and has three, it's a waste of money completely. Mm -hmm. And so you get the, you get the uh, by d uh, having a, uh, investment, you get the benefit of the, G of the GDP in the short run. But if it's not productive, it's really a waste. So this uh, is potentially a problem because mm -hmm. China has a huge amount of overcapacity. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the work report pointed out that in, in steel and cement and, and glass, that, that pointed out, but I also know there many other things, there's chemicals. I mean, there are many areas mm -hmm. in which China has a significant overcapacity, and much of the overcapacity mm -hmm. is in inefficient uh, factories that are highly polluting. So this is a problem. And if you multiply that by the, the issue of the local debt and the uh, local areas who, who finance their, um, uh, their local revenues through selling of land, which has been a, a way that this has been done, that's unsustainable. And new methods of, of sustainable uh, fiscal revenues for the, for the local areas need to be achieved without r running up very high debt, which is, uh, from what everybody uh, knowledgeable seems to say, is manageable today, but it really can't get much more than it is today. Mm -hmm. And so that puts, all that puts pressure on investment, not to mention pollution, mm -hmm. uh, because the m much of the investment is, is uh, more polluting. Yeah. And uh, everybody, you know, and, and if, uh, is, is very concerned about it, especially here in Beijing. And, you know, I, I suffered eight days of very unpleasant uh, <laughs> pollution. Uh, today is very nice, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it's been, it, last week was terrible. Uh, I love to play table tennis. I play very hard, and my table tennis was was degraded because of the pollution. <laughs> so I was very unhappy yeah. about uh -huh. that. So people have to suffer. So that puts pressure on investment. On export, uh, Europe is still weak. U.S. is okay. The world is not strong e economically. Plus China has the pressure of its, uh, uh, of its currency and, and trade imbalances. So exports are not going to drive uh, future growth. So that leaves only consumption. And in fact, uh, Premier Li um, uh, emphasized that. He said, the dominant form of growing the economy is domestic consumption. That's great, and that's where it should be, and, w and, where every, and the world's very happy to see mm -hmm. that, because as China's consumption increases, that uh, 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 in, uh, improves the balance of trade, they can buy more imports, the living standards go up, the, the currency goes up, and, and everybody benefits by that. Problem with that is that it's, it, it's not that easy to change a social mindset that any, mm -hmm. anybody have. All societies have a, uh, an inertia of how they think. Uh, and China, uh, the Chinese people are generally very save oriented because they're concerned. They've mm -hmm. been through turmoil in the past in their living memory. Uh, 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 older people remember what it was in the late 50s and 60s, uh, uh, Cultural Revolution time and, and uh, even, uh, even struggles after. So they are want to save their money for health care, retirement. And so it's not easy to get a sudden big spurt in consumption. Mm -hmm. it, it will grow normally, but it's not going to be a panacea. So if you look at the components of the GDP, this is, this is very important. One of the things in the work report that I, I focused on uh, was the, the area that had the biggest increase mm -hmm. uh, is very important, and that's health care. Mm -hmm. It was the increase of 15.1%. Uh, of uh -huh. And this is a very significant number because if you give the more health care, which, which the health care system really needs tremendous upgrading in China in many respects, but at least resources are being uh, added to that. I, I'm often asked in the international media about uh, the military increase of 12.2%. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. And one of the things I point out is that that's not the highest. Uh, health care is 15%. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Um, this shows an emphasis of the leadership of where it has to be. And other, other things are good, too. If you look at uh, uh, research in science and technology and education, they are all higher than the GDP growth rate. Mm -hmm. So the GDP growth rate last year was 7.7%. 7 
uh, science technology was like 9.8, education was 8 or 9. So it was in, they were all higher. So, mm -hmm. so it sends a signal that leaders are increasing uh, social uh, ish, uh, uh, um, uh, support, education, science and technology more than the GDP is growing. So it's, ha it's, 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 uh, it's, it's having a larger part of society. And I think all of that is excellent for the future. Okay, uh, thanks, Dr. Kuhn. Thank you very much for sharing your insights about uh, China's direction and uh, uh, the relationship with the world and uh, the opportunities for the multinational company in China. Thank you very much.
过阵仗，承诺不兑现，刀令西赶，数据掺水。二，依靠制度规约和市场国企遏制商业失信蔓延。商务诚信是壮士断腕的决心，依法严查严治，不怕一时一事对增长或就业产生的短暂影响。构建诉讼。诚信体系，提升司法公信力，不公开、不透明，往往成为滋生司法不公或应拖垮司法公开渠道。通过全流程，及时、全面公开，保障公众对司法工作的知情权、参与权，影响还有推广。令人咋舌，应摒弃对诚信构成睁一只眼闭一只眼的烂泥菜谱，开展专项整治活动，清理起网络推广渠道，铲除起无从建设的成熟经验。世界主要发达国家已普遍建立了较为完善的。